Hey, it's Chris. What are we doing? Upcoming crowdfunding games this week. And we have three or four-ish. But interesting part here is that there's a big one looming, lurking on the horizon that we don't have a date for that's supposed to launch in November. So let's talk about it first. Nemesis Retaliation. Nemesis only like Umber Hulk, you know, Space Marines version-ish, if you will. More of a full cooperative crawl, more than the one versus game that you are familiar with, with the previous two versions of Lockdown and Original Flavor. And is it going to be that much different? A few people played it over at Essen recently, and I would imagine that you're going to see some awfully big names that were on the, all of their other campaigns start leaking out information once, I'm assuming, an embargo gets lifted. So I'm going to guess it's not this week, but in preparation for it, let's bring it about it anyway. What is it? Well, it's like the other two. It's an upgraded version, if you will, but you're not going to have fixed variable room layouts. There's going to be a random room allocation, and it's going to be card play very thematic as you play cards that are unique to your own characters, but not necessarily going to be ones that are going to cost you like they're going to do in previous games every single time you play them. Objectives are going to be different in how you're acquiring them or how you're utilizing them. And you're going to have to do things like securing rooms, but still having to roll a danger die to potentially move around. Per some of the forum comments, there's an oxygen air mechanic you're going to have to be taking into account. So it reminds me a little bit more like the stalker version of this coming out. So again, I would imagine you're going to see like 16 videos all pop up at once in your feed in the near future of this one. Things we know launching this week, though, number one for me is Kelp. I will have a video out either tomorrow or Monday talking about this very, very good two-player asymmetric octopus versus shark game. Octopus, where you've got the dominoes hidden, essentially, facing you, one of which you're playing a little bit of which one is this, which one of this is your octopus, as the shark is slowly chasing it around from waypoint to waypoint, utilizing dice to manipulate its way across these currents a little bit faster because if the shark stops moving, i.e. also runs out of energy, they lose. Shark can attack and find the octopus though and has, and only potentially has two chances to avoid the attack, but it could happen on the first one as well where the shark actually wins the game. The octopus can win it asymmetrically before that thing happens by going around and feeding on its four pieces of food that it needs in order to upgrade. But both of these have their own asymmetric upgrades that you're going to be slowly adding abilities for or card play alongside, depending if you're the shark and the octopus respectively. If you like two player asymmetric games with a lower overhead, with a little bit less of worrying about the dynamic of having to remember all of what the other person can do, this one's going to appeal to you. But again, it's going to have some of that flavor die rolling, especially on the Sark side of things, and some randomness of trying to guess where those uh, dominoes are or which ones they are. Uh, Stratego style, if you will. So it may or may not suit you depending on those needs. The next one up is AEG's foray back on the crowdfunding, and that's Undergrove, the latest from Elizabeth Hargrave. And Beth Solvel has some awesome art to go with it. And you're going to go back to the Earth theme that is all the rage nowadays that we've seen on crowdfunding. And they're going to be sort of pick up and deliver with tile placement, worker placement, as your mushrooms transporting resources underground back and forth. Yeah, I mean, it sounds kind of cool, but we've seen a whole slew, right, of mushroom games on crowdfunding this year. I think we've literally seen probably three other mushroom-based crowdfunded games. And with AEG, there hasn't been the biggest incentive. They are not big on exclusives by any means. But there's usually, along with, you know, Point City and Deep Dive, which was one recently fit to print, you know, a little bit of a mini content expansion. Plus or minus whether or not it's worth it. Plus or minus whether or not you like that. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit bigger with Meeples and Monsters. But sometimes it's just not as big, say, with Deep Dive and Point City, like I mentioned previously. So it's a question of, do you back it on this side of things? Are you interested in this as sort of a, a little bit of lengthier? And that's sort of my worry with this, right? Is with this style of game that they've gone after, I want this to be short, snappy, and sweet, you know, 45 minutes or less. Plus the playtime right now is 60 to 75 minutes. And usually you're gonna probably underrate how long it takes. And that'd be my bigger concern at a higher player count with this one, not having obviously any experience with it yet at this point. Now you're gonna be trading these mushrooms back and forth. You're gonna be having a shared forest that contains the mushrooms with the various abilities that you're utilizing. And the best thing about this is if you go over to AEG's website right now, they actually have the freaking rule book on the website well prior to the campaign, which is pretty awesome. You don't see that a whole lot. Heck, 
I just did the round up again this last week and you had a bunch of campaigns without even rule books on the page in the first place still, let alone all the number of them when I did the 33 different campaigns two weeks ago. So not really a big unknown in terms of what you're getting dynamically. It's just how does it actually flesh out from paper to the tabletop? And that's going to be your dynamic. That's going to be the thing that you're going to have to make it or break it on. Now we're also going to go over to Mind Clash. Mind Clash is back because they are bringing us Perseverance 3 and 4. And this is sort of a standalone campaign-esque heavier worker placement game. I mean, right? Heavy from Mind Clash? What? Sh color me shocked, Chris. But that's what you're going to be having to deal with. And whether or not 1 and 2 are for you, this is going to utilize and incorporate several of the same main mechanisms, but also having it stand alone on its own but you're going to be utilizing the same back to the future sort of style that they've got going on here now the dinosaurs are no longer attacking you in your colony that you're trying to establish your colony is well established but now you're going to be trying to harness them and i mean that both literally and figuratively because you can be dino riders and you can link these together to get sort of a progression based system from one to the other to give you a feeling of a campaign style i mean three and four are you a big fan of one and two i don't think based on the board game geek descriptions and the time of me filming this, this is that big of a departure. So I'm going to make the argument that if you weren't a fan of one and two, this isn't going to change your mind, but there are going to be some nuances, obviously that set it apart to make you go. Yes, I am liking one of these potentially more than the other or different flavors, if you will, sort of maybe like a uh, great Western trail, New Zealand versus great Western trail versus great Western trail, Argentina, or at the beginning of the video, right? Nemesis, Nemesis Lockdown, Nemesis Retaliation, Nemesis Ultimate Legends, Queen Mother Monster Killer. I don't know. You know, you know there's going to be one more at least, right? It's, it's, can't just do a trilogy of that. I mean, look at Zombie Side. Nemesis, the rolling right, coming up from Awakened Realms. Just kidding. I don't know. That'd be crazy though, right? Lead Stradamus. Then we have Stars of Akarios as well from OOMM Games. Uh, we're going to see what they do with a new reprint as well as some expansion content, I'm assuming, in sort of a campaign x-wing combination of starfighters you know because you can progress you can upgrade you can explore you can make your ship more customizable but it is more also along the lines of oomm's other games is a little bit of a narrative this has more of a narrative feature of that to go along with it this is a big box and i guess some of the initial complaints from the first time around was the rules maybe weren't as ironed out as people liked i don't know Again, don't have hands-on content. So that's just sort of secondhand what I've heard in that way. But you're going to be talking again with these last two. These are massive, massive price points. Kelp as well as Undergrove. You know, you can expect a $30 to $40 price point probably for both of those. I'm going to make an argument that both of these are going to be $150-ish to get in-ish, right? So completely different spectrums and scopes of what you may be looking for, what you may be interested in, but those are the big ones. Then we have a few other ones that are going to be going up alongside of this. We have a new Martin Lawrence coming from Ape Games, which is coming up as well with Chaos Cove, which is a 16, you know, asymmetric heroes that act as your workers that are going to give you different abilities depending on where and how you play them as you're going along. It's also sort of a semi-cooperative uh, worker placement game in the sense that you are fighting off, a la the one from a couple years ago, Monster Lands, uh, these invaders that are trying to take over the town. So do you have the strategy to keep them at bay, but also can you somehow still become the one that wins the most? And semi-cooperative, uh, you know, I have mixed feelings on that even in non-worker placement games as someone who isn't really the biggest fan of that. So you're going to be basically land, sea battling, uh, building forts, deploying ships, and hosting, you know, celebrations afterwards once you win. But all of those are going to be giving you different ways to get victory points. And from a Martin Wallace design, I mean, we'll see where it goes. I wasn't as fan of the bigger, the, the more recent one of the Dungeon Crawl-esque feel. I forget the name of that one right now. But the other one previous to that, Bloodstone, is also just being in the process of delivered right now. And so that one's got my interest and my eye to see uh, where those go in addition. And then we also have a reprint from 2022 uh, from Terrible Games coming up called Valka, which is a battling card game for one to six players. Basically, you know, you're just going head to head as fast and quick and as brutal as you can. Uh, you've got 84 cards and 42 spells, 42 fighters. Everyone gets dealt 10 cards and you go. They're coming back with new art. It's going to be a lot of take that. It's going to be a lot of head to head clashing. I'm interested to see what they can do because they've also come to us recently with Black Mold, as well as Token Terrors Battlegrounds, although it wasn't quite my flavor of asymmetry, it was still a very technically sound game. 
So I would imagine this is going to be more along the lines of a different, I don't know, it almost gives me a vibe of Tournament at Camelot, Tournament at Avalon, that style of just crazy powers, crazy initiative going up head to head. How much can you hold off other people's take that versus each other? Maybe like more like a whiz war, only a card version of it, if you will. So we'll see what they've got in store for us. Uh, otherwise, other than that, I was supposed to go to a party today uh, and it ended up getting delayed because the person who was hosting it, um, you know, their whole family got hand, foot and mouth disease. So not going there, not going anywhere near there. Can't do it, won't do it. Uh, kids soccer is over, so we have literally no other plans. And that's what I've got going on. Just playing some games, uh, doing a little filming this weekend, hopefully getting something new played, but maybe just some old stuff too. I like, I got a few games that I'm just looking at going, okay, I need to get a little bit more of that. And um, yeah, I don't know. Then next week I'll have another one, uh, two videos coming out as well for uh, Fire Siege as well as Singularity. Those are going to be very interesting games for you to keep your eye on as well. Um, not as deep into Fire Siege right now. Can't give you too many spoilers on that one, but boy, howdy, Singularity big fan of that one so far uh apart from that i mean again if you missed my anime rant on the other day i'm catching up and caught up now with juju kaisen and so i'm keeping away from the manga though i'm keeping away from the manga i'm up to date on my one piece manga i need to catch up to speed on my tower of god manhwa so that's essentially all i've got going on right now um i'll have a mini review as well hopefully come out this week talking about uh the, one of those five and ones again uh, running through some uh, new recent releases and my feelings, pros, cons, and everything else in between on them. Uh, maybe some look back of November. I just did the October ones this past week. And oh, the best video of all, the don't back anything video. Boom, that one's going to be dropping as well as the don't do anything buying wise at retail. So both of those are filmed. At least one of those will come out this coming week as well, depending on the editing. Probably the don't back anything. That one's a little more time sensitive. So that's what we've got going on there. And um, thank you for subscribing, checking me out in the first place, checking me out again, or somehow still finding me appealing after all this time as well. So if you're not subscribed, that'd be awesome. I have a Patreon if you really, really, really like me for some reason, those crazy people that do. And that's all I got right now. I got to go put my kids to bed. So, you know, parenting, adulting, as I said to someone else at work the other day, right? Adulting sucks sometimes. Not kids, not kids. I'm talking about like mortgages and that sort of stuff, right? Ugh. Right? So, there you go. Stay classy. That's what's upcoming. Peace out.